Welcome farmers and stakeholders to our free tobacco training. My name is Runyara Romronda and I'll be your moderator for today's session. We are live on our Agribusiness Media Facebook page. We're delighted to have join us today. This training aims to enhance your tobacco farming skills and knowledge and provide an opportunity to connect with industry, exporters, and reputable partners. Joining us today, we have Desmond from THI Insurance, Mr. Mugio from the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water, and Rural Development, Tashinga from ZFC, Konizashe from, from Smart Kurima. We also have Freedom from the Tobacco Industry and Marketing Board. No doubt we have the right experts for the training today. Please note that we will have a question and answer segment after all the presentations. Our first presenter is Desmond from CHI Insurance. Desmond will be discussing risk management. Desmond, please go for it. You have 15 minutes. Uh, firstly, I would like to welcome all viewers and listeners uh, from the agricultural field and uh, from all the farms and those who have interest in this business. Uh, let me start by mentioning that our office has moved from uh, Mount Pleasant, where we used to be, to the new site uh, in Masasa. I think you can see the addresses there. We used to be at number 26 and Diva Crescent, Mount Pleasant Business Park, and now we have moved to Masasa, 23 George Avenue. Uh, please do not hesitate to, to visit us uh, at that address. We still offer the same services despite our location. So please uh, do feel free to visit our offices for any uh, inquiries regarding our products. Uh -huh. THI Insurance, I will just give a short overview. Uh, it's founded in 1938 as a well and windstorm scheme, uh, which developed to a fully fledged insurer, professional insurer. And now we now offer uh, various products in agricultural, agricultural insurance and having developed through uh, different stages uh, an evolution that has managed us to be one of the leading agricultural uh, insurers in Zimbabwe, especially in tobacco, with a very good track record of uh, claim settlements. Most of the farmers who are in tobacco would uh, remember that we are one of those uh, organizations who managed to pay off all the claims in uh, 2021, 2022, when uh, most of the tobacco was uh, affected by hail and windstorm. We are also part of Zimnat and um, one of the leading uh, insurance companies here in Zimbabwe. And we are supported by Tata, which is an agricultural insurance uh, uh, venture who are all well repeatable within our region. Uh, of our products, you can see that we are in livestock, we are in crops, we are in farm and equipment, we are also in farm stocks and buildings. Uh, and as you can see from my presentation there, uh, we cover perils such as uh, diseases, electrocution, fire, lightning for your livestock, for crops, of course, your frost, your uh, hail and windstorm, and for your farm machinery and equipment, theft, fire, and other perils. Uh, please do not hesitate to visit us. Uh, we are doing very well in that regard uh, in other businesses, uh, agricultural insurance business. I will get on to risk management in uh, tobacco production. As we might all know that tobacco is important uh, in our Zimbabwe agricultural field. Why? Because Zimbabwe is the first um or number one in Africa in terms of tobacco production. I think in Africa, you cannot talk about uh, tobacco production without mentioning uh, Zimbabwe. We are also ranked sixth in the whole world in terms of tobacco production. Uh, because of the nature, tobacco is susceptible to the elements of weather, uh, risks such as flooding, excessive rain, pests and diseases, and most uh, importantly, hail and wind damage, which is more prominent uh, in, uh, in, in Zimbabwe and the other uh, tropical regions. Uh, fire also an issue, especially when it comes to curing, because most of the bands use uh, fire for curing. Tobacco is also at risk uh, uh, or by theft uh, at the farm, and also when in transit, uh, theft is also an issue, including uh, fire and accidental damage. Hence, why today we have decided to talk about risk management in tobacco production. 
uh, you would also find that tobacco is ranked high in terms of uh, its risk, uh, uh, it's being risky compared to other crops. In a research which was uh, uh, investigation uh, held for 30 years from 1986 to 2017, uh, tobacco had 38% chances of, uh, of losses uh, compared to seed cotton which comes to 9.9%, May is 10.1%. And all these records indicate to you that uh, tobacco is a risky crop when it comes to the uh, to weather patterns that we are experiencing nowadays. Yeah, And uh, so our products would range from hail and windstorm, uh, theft, flooding, the transit risks that I've mentioned, diseases, of course, uh, drought, excessive rain, pest and fire. All these are the risks that we uh, look forward to, to, to be talking uh, about some of them so that we, we know how we can go about it in terms of risk management in tobacco production. Uh, when it comes to drought, you find that the most affected are the small scale growers because they rely on rain fed, but also irrigation can be affected because of the water dam uh, levels uh, that tend to go down when there is drought. The crop is, however, tolerant to short period of, periods of drought, but longer periods of uh, of of, um, of drought can uh, result in losses in yield, uh, at times even resulting to permanent rooting point. Uh, most insurance companies do not offer drought uh, in tobacco insurance, but uh, I understand the innovations are still underway to offer this uh, drought cover in form of index insurance to make it easier for our small scale farmers to access insurance. Uh, I, how do we mitigate against this as a risk management? Of course, we call upon our farmers to develop some irrigation. I uh, also call upon our small scale farmers to uh, implement strategies such as uh, potholing and tide ridging so that they conserve whatever moisture they can receive. Early planting is good uh, for, for moisture conservation. Why? Because uh, your crop has a chance of getting all the rain that uh, we receive throughout the whole season, unlike if you plant later. Water planting is where farmers use uh, maybe uh, water to, to plant the crop before the rains. And when the rains come, the uh, crop is already developed uh, some roots, uh, a very strong root system, and now is able to grow healthy. Uh, you can also uh, apply some moisture conservation techniques such as winter plowing and uh, other techniques that are good for that. But it is important for farmers to note that uh, they have to, uh, to, to develop strategies for this risk. Uh, excessive rain is whereby you, you receive uh, a lot of rain uh, and it fuels or filled uh, soil. The, the, the soil is, is filled to its filled capacity and excess water is within the root zone. The plant cannot use that water uh, and as a result, it, result, it begins to affect your crop. There's oxygen depletion as oxygen is removed from the soil. Death of cells leading to decay of the roots there's nutrient loss, plants will due to excessive rain, and as a result, uh, farmers do have low yields in that regard. So excessive rain can be a challenge again. Uh, how do we mitigate the risk of excessive rain as farmers? Um, flooding. Flooding is whereby yeah, we receive rain and the water channels or storm drains are not able to hold that water because of its vastness and it ends up uh, uh, flowing back and uh, flooding all area and this may be tobacco lands. Increase in discharge can be caused by prolonged rainfall. So it becomes saturated so that it can no longer hold water just as in excessive rainfall. Water escaping again from enclosed water sources is a potential to co cause flooding. Uh, dams, it is a voice, uh, uh, can be sources of flooding risk if they break and overflow. Uh, most farmers uh, or clients may not understand this, but two years ago, we had a similar issue where a dam had to burst and the farmer lost the tobacco crop and they were lucky to be alive because that uh, the bursting occurred. Uh, they were not at the site where these things happened. Flooding water, same effect is excessive rain. Construction of contours and avoiding stream bank cultivation and avoiding uh, locating arable lands downstream can be a, a mitigatory 
uh, measure against the flooding. Consider choice of lanes with gentle slopes. I think your land classes two and three are the most appropriate ones. Next slide. The effects of flooding in tobacco are uh, direct rushing of water will affect the tobacco. Uh, the plants will uh, submerge and uh, it creates abiotic factors. In other ways, the soil end up uh, dying uh, because we don't have biological activities taking place. You know, your pH again is affected because the bases are actually uh, leached down. It alters chemical and physical characters of the soil, substantially reducing the crop stand growth and yield of the crop. So that's why this risk is uh, of much importance to talk about and to understand. Of course, construction of contours and avoiding stream bank cultivation uh, and locating arable lands downstream. The choice of arable land, again, as I have mentioned uh, earlier on, is very important. 1.2 to 1.5% slope is uh, appropriate for, for this, uh, for locating your, for, for fields, of course. Uh, wind and air damage is one of the most important uh, risks in our tobacco. Uh, it occurs every year. It destroys a lot of uh, tobacco plants. And mostly, uh, since our, the tobacco plant, the leaf is the one that is so much important. It breaks uh, the, the midribs of, uh, of, of the leaves. Uh, the lamina, of course, is lost. Serious tuberculosis okay due to hail and wind and can destroy the entire crop. We have seen in Zimbabwe pictures of these uh, crops uh, being destroyed and huge sums of money, of course, being paid by insurance companies to uh, compensate farmers who have lost their crops. I have already mentioned that 21, 2022 was the wet season since THI recorded uh, records uh, began in 1938. I have to uh, mention that uh, this is a risk that farmers should actually try to understand it, take off by insuring their crops. Around young crops have a potential to recover uh, if they are hit at an early stage. Uh, the financial risk transfer by taking a policy of health and windstorm insurance from reputable insurance is the only way you can uh, you can uh, you can resolve this risk. Uh, with me, the pictures of uh, of tobacco, of course, uh, I have mentioned about minimum damage where this can recover and uh, also severe damage then. I think you can see that uh, once that happens at that particular stage, uh, you may not have uh, the yield that you wanted to have. And hence, it is important for you to consider uh, insurance for, for the for 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 your for your tobacco crop but however i think this is one of the products that uh, most tobacco farmers are very much used to and uh, if uh, you want to have this insurance i would advise that you conduct us at our offices uh, and also conduct us or i don't know our telephone numbers also conduct your broker so that you understand how you can uh, apply for the insurance however farmers should understand that with this insurance there are certain inclusions uh, that are applicable to this insurance. For example, the entire uh, policy doesn't cover your tobacco in seed beds. It also doesn't cover loss and damage due to um, malpractice uh, or failure to establish the uh, good actual agricultural practice as recommended by TRB. And that is what is very much important because most farmers now, they, are, they know that there's insurance but you have to ensure a crop that you are, uh, are growing uh, in, in, in a good manner, uh, following good agricultural practice. Prime leaves, suckers, and overripe leaves are excluded from this conversation. Uh, what do you do when you have uh, a health strike? Uh, you notify your broker. Uh, you can notify THI within 48 hours of the strike. Uh, brokers will fill in the report uh, form for you. Uh, and they will indicate whether the crop is stopped or not. By the way, this insurance will cover uh, repayable leaf, and hence we want to know whether the crop is matured or not. Inspectors will be appointed. We have experienced in inspectors. Uh, one of the, we are one of the organizations which very much experienced in inspectors who can do a good job. They will come, do an assessment. Uh, Grishes are to be signed by the farmer's representative's farmer and then synced into our system. The grower is notified of the outcome as soon as the calculations are complete. And whatever happens after that, 
I think even if the farmer is not happy, there are some procedures that are followed so that a reinspection is done. What I can only say to our uh, clients is that we have got a good service and we are at your service uh, as far as this insurance product is concerned. Yes. Uh, the factors that affect the claim payment, of course, there will be a percentage of damage, the level of cover, the crop stand, which is your plant population, the damaged area. We also have deductible excess, which is uh, applicable. Um, replanted tobacco after destroying the original area on which the claim has been made must be insured on a new policy. Uh, farmers should understand that once they are paid for that particular policy, they have to get a new policy. Uh, I will, I will move, quickly move on to what we call crop processing infrastructure and transit insurance, which we call CIT at THI Zimnat Insurance. This is the one that covers your burn structures, your grading sheds, uh, also your tobacco leaf infrastructure, a uh, business interruption, uh, which is increasing cost of working is also covered here. We also have your ancillary equipment theft section. Uh, let's move on. And so your, your leaf section uh, during curing, of course, is at risk because of the fire. Also, when it is on storage, it is also at, at risk because of your fire. The leaf is also at risk during transit when it is being transported from the farm to the to the to the sales floors. So it, this it, it, insurance will cover this part. Theft, fire, water damage. A tobacco can be carried in vehicles suitable for the tobacco protected and covered in tarpaulins and plastic. And in, in short, what we are saying is, in as much as you have insurance, you should act as if you are not insured, so that um, if there are losses, there are actually so losses that are beyond your control. And so we have the infrastructure section, which covers your barns, buildings. It covers buildings against the destruction, fire alert perils based on the values declared. It also includes the riotous acts by the general public or employees resulting in destruction of buildings. Uh, malicious damage is also included in this case. Uh, we also move on to, um, to business interruption. We said uh, it covers the increase of cost in working resulting from destruction of insured infrastructure. When you long, no longer have the bans, the insurance will then cover you for the extra cost uh, that you, you incur as you try to to uh to solve the the challenges of the fire ancillary equipment now we have uh those tunnel bands uh we used to have clips and uh, it includes your fans it includes your trolleys and all that so your it it all covers that your all your ancillary, ancillary equipment theft uh, we, tobacco is at risk high risk in terms of theft, theft because it can easily be converted into cash so you have to make sure that you fill in your theft cover so that you, you are covered when theft happens along the road. Nowadays, even robbers on gunpoint, they can take a, a track of bells and they go and change the bells and sell them the next day. Um, a damage or a destruction of buildings in commission of acts of theft by forcible entry is also covered, which is your theft here. Uh, cover is strictly on first loss basis, which means you cannot uh, pay premium for all the crop that we have, but you just um, uh, uh, decide how, at what level uh, you can actually insure is because you won't lose the whole thing. It can be a third turn track, the, the, that can be your first loss basis or the number of bells. I uh, just to, uh, to mention what is not covered uh, by this. Of course, if you keep your bells and they are affected by the mean pests and animals, it doesn't ensure that. Uh, the molding and rotting and deterioration, unless it is caused by insured Peru during and immediately following an insured event. So if you keep your tobacco there in this molding, uh, it will not be actually attract uh, compensation. Breaking due to excessive weight, of course, I think this is self-explanatory. Gradual deterioration is again when you are keeping your tobacco there and then it's affected by other factors such as moisture and all that, and it's actually destroyed in that regard. Consequential loss at any kind is not covered. Uh, and completed buildings, loss from uncompleted buildings. In other words, we are saying, let's make sure that 
uh, the buildings in which we keep our tobacco are well uh, enclosed, well safe for the tobacco. Uh, loss occasioned by its own fermentation, natural eating, or is by undergoing artificial eating. What happens with tobacco barrels is that if you heap them uh, without uh, spaces of aeration, they will ferment and uh, generate uh, heat, which to eventually generate into fire, and you lose a lot of bells uh, from that. Uh, theft has got to be forcible by 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 forcible entry or at at gunpoint, and uh, I think these are the things that we cover in those that, that we do not cover. Uh, the explanation is not preemptive of everything, but if you visit us and conduct us. We explain everything that is not covered and everything that is covered in that regard. I think I've dealt with that. Um, uh, let me take this opportunity to thank you all for listening and the, uh, from this presentation. And I hope you'll be able to benefit from the presentation that I have actually shared with you. Thank you very much. Welcome questions. Uh, I think at the end of the session, as has been mentioned by the moderator. Thank you. Sorry. Um, thank you, THI Insurance, for the great presentation. What are the deadlines for both irrigated and rain-fed rain, rain -fed tobacco insurance? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, with me here is uh, Edson. Edson uh, is the underwriter, uh, agriculture underwriter for, for THI. So I will give you an opportunity to answer two questions. OK, thank you for the questions. Um, our cutoff dates uh, traditionally is the 30th of November of every year. But if you are contracted, then we are guided by the, by the contractors, or we are also guided by contractors. But if you are self-funded, uh, our closing off date is the 30th of November. I want to thank everyone who came to this webinar and uh, it's an honor to be. Yeah, it's an honor to be in this kind of uh, discussion where we have a pool of experts, farmers who want to know about what are the best way of doing tobacco. So I was given a task to try to share with farmers and to discuss what the way forward as a country about tobacco seedlings and transplanting tips for food security for everywhere and every day. So if you look at my title, it's more about food security, though it is tobacco. We need livelihood within those tobacco farmers who are doing tobacco. And uh, if you look at my first PowerPoint, actually, it's very, it's very loaded in terms of fun things. You see rain, sun, everything is coming outside. Well, we do the focus in the ministry that we had the focus that the rains are almost with us. And we had the seasonal focus. We talked about the Enzo system, the El Nino. We said this year we might receive low rainfalls, but to us as a ministry, we say food security everywhere, every day. Why? Because whether El Nino or La Nina or Vutro, we always do what's supposed to do to feed the nation. So if you look at it, the rains are actually favoring us, despite those uh, those focus. It means that farmers they should continue doing what's supposed to be done because this is natural. So we are happy that the rains are actually showing that they are around Zimbabwe, which is a blessing to us. So let me go towards my presentation. If you look at the presentation in Tobago, actually, the ministry, or actually the government of Zimbabwe, uh, uh, is to transform Tobago value chain into a 5 billion industry by 2025 through increased production, productivity, localization, tobacco production, financing, and value addition. So, that's a big money. If you look at it, five billion, which was being earned by the government. So one of them is to be to do what we are doing, and we are happy that we have been invited to be part of success team uh, towards five billion uh, projection by the government. Uh, going straight to the main, 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 main aim of us being here. If you look at it, we are we use calendar based training in the ministry. So I won't go too much into the seed links. Why? Because we assume each and every farmer now have managed to establish his seed links. So at this moment of time, most of farmers are doing what you call hardening of their seed links. Some have already transplanted, some are now starting even uh, 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 ripping their tobacco. 
but let's deal with the majority. So we're going to do a calendar-based training for today. In other training, we continue to do other relevant topics which might matter. So now, I think the word here, most of seedlings, you know, tobacco is grown under seed base, either in floor trays or conventional. So either way, you need to harden the, the seedling. The seedlings, when I say hardening, you look far, far from my left of my slide, you need to come up with the seedlings, which are very strong, because remember, hardening is exposed to transplant seedlings uh, gradually to outdoor conditions. Normally, if you know seedlings are done, it is very well protected areas where we have good moisture, everything is well pampered. But now we want to transplant these seedlings to the field where they are now alone there. So it's more like a young man who is trying to start a new job from rural area to Harare. So that's hardening. So we are saying at this moment, most of farmers are doing hardening of their seedlings. So we have to know how to do it. Hardening is not actually 100% with the draw of rain. For why? Because with the draw 100% of moisture, you actually harm your seedlings. So let's go through some of these facts and we we'll discuss how best can we actually help farmers at this moment of time. Uh, I'm sure this is this power, this, this 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 slide. I hope is clear on your side. Uh, as I said, had an limping moisture. It shows a sign of of wilting at 10 a.m. Please irrigate. Don't with the draw 100 percent. If you show, if you see that your 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 your, your tobacco seedlings are now wilting at 10 o'clock around this time, it means that there's something wrong. You have to irrigate those seedlings. Then continue at this moment. I know farmers who are there continue to clip and had the no, you know, not for uniformity. So you continue to clip. When I'm saying clipping, you'll be like cutting your your tips of your of your seedlings as a way of reducing the dry the biomass. Because we don't want uh, seedlings which actually have several leaves because they actually suffocate when they go to field. We want to reduce the rate of uh transpiration from those leaves so we have to clip those leaves continuously for the next two weeks why because i know we are moving into a planting window where most farmers are going to do what we call cement binder then the plant took time to establish if we uh don't harden so we need to harden the, the seedlings it's the way of spraying water and clipping it then two days before transplanting you make sure you do the final clipping. We don't want to a seedling or seedling which have many leaves. You see the next stage of how many leaves do we expect to have on a seedling. Then actually we recommend maybe you are about to plant a soshin. You need to apply a certain chemical for soshin by drenching. You know, soshin is a very big problem to seed to 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 establish the uh to establish the uh, uh plants in the field why mm -hmm. because social is more like uh, to have like a wound on their on their stem so eventually they will die off so we are saying apply shavit uh or try the mineral 150 by ranging two days before you transplant which is very critical why I wrote this one, because I know farmers, they know all these procedures, but make sure you understand this one. So you go to the a, a chemical company and say, please go and find a chemical named Soshin. So the Soshin will help you to prevent uh, uh, a, a chemical which can control Soshin. So if you go to maybe shop, you can ask that the, I want to buy a chemical for social they'll give you. And then a day before, please, because we've been handling, yes, make sure you are now, you you actually water the food very thoroughly. So if you look at that now, because we have managed to do a uh, irrigation a day before, it's a way to make sure the, seed, the roots inside the, um, inside the soils or inside the plot trees, they are 100% wet. We want to make sure when the seed, the seed is transplanted to the to the field, they have enough moisture to establish. So going next, someone will ask, what's the best characteristics of a seedling? In this slide, I just want to be so precise. 
Usually we say a quality of good seedlings are supposed to be 12 to 15 centimeters, a pendle thick with seven to eight leaves for conventional systems. We don't want seedlings with the main leaves, as I said, you have to clip continuously for the past two weeks. Why? Because if you come with a seed with a lot of uh, jackets or leaves there, it will have a problem with establishing. Why? Because there's a lot of maybe mud will be over covering, some will be, will be covered by mud. So if you have less leaves, like the one which I showed, it can actually establish. So we need clean seedlings as been shown by that one. And a very vast network of, of roots. I repeat this one. We should transplant seedlings with roots. Of course, we might forgo for 12 centimeters, 15 centimeters, depending on the type of seedbed system you use. You might get a seedling with eight centimeters, but with the good roots, you can transplant. On this one, to farmers, I want to advise you that please don't over withdraw seedlings from seedbeds. I know some people will be saying that don't check all seedlings from your seedbed. We need seedlings which are very healthy as we are defined by four centimeters with a vast number of roots. Those farmers who say, no, I'm going to buy seedlings, make sure you look at these qualities. Why? Well, there are some farmers who tend to sell uh, selected seedlings, which have some problems. We know Tiara, they usually sell five grams of seeds, which may be translated to 10,000 plants or 25,000 plants. Yes, that's fine, but make sure some of these seedlings they are not held for transplanting. We need high productivity uh, uh, seedlings, which can actually establish um, without any problem there. So please take note of that, that we need a high network seedlings as shown by the PowerPoint. Now let's move towards to the transplanting. If you look at transplanting, you make sure that we are actually in the planting window, as I said, some are actually doing transplanting. A mark out before transplanting is shown on my right side of my slide. Don't do a, 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 an ad hoc way of doing things. Mark your points. You know the ridges, we actually recommend a 0 0.56 to 61 between plants and 1.2 uh, between ridges. Usually we have, end up having 14,000 to 15,000 plants per hectare. So hauling out gang actually supposed to be at least if you are using those uh, tractors, 24 people, if you are a commercial farmer. But if you are now a small scale farmer, should they have a, at least number one, one will apply water, someone, a waiter, we send the, who actually uh, place the, the, the seedlings, another one who transplants, and the other one who cover, and the last person who actually do the application of uh, of chemicals, which I'm going to define following uh, on the following uh, slides. When you dry planting like now, there's no rainfall. Make sure that if you are doing water planting, as you, as you always say, we recommend tobacco to be grown before the end of November as a way of trying to catch the. So when you are transplanting now, you should use nematicides size in the water, as shown on that one. Nematicides size, they should be in the water. Don't apply because we want the medicide to actually sink with the water. Why? Because they are the one which actually reduce the uh, threshold of uh, nematodes. So seeing aphsides, we also should also apply aphsides if you grow, you transplant your tobacco around 20 November to December because we know the population of, 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 of aphids will actually increase from November to December. So these are some of the chemicals which we may say you apply, but I'm going to give a hint on these chemicals. I recently received a, a article from Chara B that some of them have been banned. So take care of note, I'm going to show you another slide which recommend the best chemicals to use. But in that addition, you should also apply a chemical for white grape and wireworms if they are so common in your areas. Then cutworms, you can use standard after planting, and make sure that you have a, a in, when you are planting, you should apply an nematicide, a, a insecticide for aphids, then another one for cutworms. Uh, cutworms you only apply after you have covered up. Remember, you don't plant in a water. You allow the water to to sink, then you plant because you don't want to have an air pockets 
if you apply in your water, maybe sometimes you don't close well. So make sure all the water you apply in a dry planting, you make you wait for it to to sink, then you plant your crop. I'm going to show a video with the the video with the with the organizer for you, those who are in the in the webinar to get the illustration. So that reminds me after this one, so that people really see how do you mean when I say to, how to do transplanting. Then recently, as I said, these are some of the uh, tobacco chemicals which were recommended and banned. We have a number of them which were banned, like monocotrophos, thiodicarb, chloriphos, as I said, methyl, while iod carb is the only nematicide that has been prohibited from use. So in terms of, of, of nematicides, iod carb is the only which is actually recommended. Alaclo, uh, demontainment, metoclam, trifluorine, complete list of hepcid were, were scratched. So if you look at these ones, we are saying that you have to go to the Ministry of Agriculture and get a list of recommended herbicides, which are actually recommended. Why? Because they affect, they affect your quality of your crop. So on this one is a very recent list, which I'm going to share with you so that you also share with all farmers who are there that please, when you go to them, when you go to these uh, uh, trade names or uh, manufacturers of these chemicals, make sure you look at chemical upside, nematicide, then they will give you the right chemicals. Don't go with the trade names because there are several of them. So we don't recommend uh, trade names when you are doing training as a ministry because we have different companies which we, which we actually support as a ministry. Then in addition to that, in the ministry, we have a several uh, training venues which we are doing. If you look at my slide, we have farmer food schools around the whole countries. These farmer food schools, they are dotted in every uh, village head, including the areas where tobacco is not being grown. So make use of them to get this relevant information and update information so that you don't be left behind. If you look at the map, we have more than 35,000. So we are everywhere with more than 5,600 uh, extension officers, maybe in tobacco areas, we are actually very active. We support a number of stakeholders. So please work with us as a ministry because some of this, we, our, this, is, this is our role to, to share the right words about tobacco. As I said, that recently CRB sent us a list which we actually they recommend that farmers must use. So as a way forward, uh, we say as a ministry, we recommend uh, what we call farmer field discourse in a good agronomic practice and we share the good practices of tobacco. If you look at that, this slide, you can see there's guys from Chara B and from far left of my side, we have, uh, I have a, a illustration of a, a puzzle of people. This puzzle of people shows that everyone is important in tobacco productivity to meet the 5 billion target, like what you are doing. So let's continue to work together. Uh, we have several pamphlets as I said, tobacco is, is, a, is a very broad. We need, need to make sure that we are so specific to problems. We have a number of people which we refer if we have some problems within our, in every word in Zimbabwe. So don't hesitate. We don't pay any, we don't, we don't, we don't pay anything to get relevant information about tobacco. Then now, uh, I think I want to thank you because uh, we are saying food security everywhere, every day as a country and uh, we believe in collaboration and uh, we say I'm going to leave my, 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 my email and also my provincial teams which have the nitty greetings of tobacco production if you need. You just need to just to call them, they'll come to your farms for further illustration of these things. So maybe as a matter of time, I was given 15 minutes, I want to say thank you everyone. Thank you. Good day to you all from wherever you are connecting from. My name is Tashingam Zengi. I'm the technical advisor of ZFC. Uh, my presentation is going to talk about uh, soil and crop health in tobacco production. Uh, my presentation will go through the soil requirements, nutritional requirements, as well as crop protection issues in tobacco. Um, 
as you are aware, the government introduced the Zimbabwe Tobacco Value Chain Transformation, and I want to take this opportunity to thank all stakeholders, our esteemed farmers, for reaching one of the key issues in um, this um, plan. As you are aware, that we achieved close to 300 million kgs um, in this year, the 2022 to 2023 farming season. But however, the key issues from this um, the value chain transformation plan is sustainable intensification and increased uh, productivity. As you are aware, the average, the national average offers around 1.5 tons uh, per hectare. Um, but uh, we have varieties that have a potential to reach 4.5 to 5 tons per hectare. So what might be the challenges in achieving this? It is because maybe we need to refine our crop nutrition and our crop protection strategies that are very important in sustainable intensification. So by sustainable intensification, we are looking at the same, we are looking to increase productivity uh, without increasing land, but in an environmentally sustainable manner, in an economically sustainable manner, and socially sustainable manner. So what are the soil requirements for tobacco? Tobacco does well in sand looms, sand looms and looms. These are the best soils for tobacco. The ideal pH is 5.5, pH is low as 5.1. The key issues in tobacco production is drainage. Drainage causes root damage and increases risk of disease. That's why you see tobacco is always grown in ridges. This is done to promote good service drainage as well as to pro provide a good microclimate for the early growth of tobacco. But um, currently, due to the fact that um, we are likely to face El Nino, so I would recommend farmers to use what we call beds or double ridges, which are with the potential to save water. So what are the nutritional requirements of tobacco? For the three nutrients, nitrogen, for the three nutrients, NPK, I'll first of all talk about the nutritional requirements in, in terms of NPK. So for nitrogen, we are looking at 120 kgs, 250 kgs. You might require more if there is leaching. For phosphate, you need 20 to 25 kgs per hectare, but you need to apply 100 to 125 kgs per hectare of, of phosphate because phosphate is inefficient. The pathway um, in terms of um, which is used to absorb phosphorus is actually what we call a torturous pathway, which is characterized by torchosity. So you need to apply that higher amount for you to achieve the 20 to 35 kgs per hectare. So in terms of potash, you need 150 kgs to 200 kgs per hectare. Magnesium, 18 to 20 kgs per hectare. What I need to emphasize is also boron. Boron is a critical component that is required for tobacco production, which can be provided by a compound or foliar fertilizer. So for you to get this result, these are general recommendations, but you also need to do your soil testing, which is in essential uh, to determine the nutritional status of the soil and to, de to determine the crop nutrient requirements. So soil testing is very important, but you would find much of our farmers, especially small water farmers, are not giving it attention. Um, is it beneficial in any way? I think it is beneficial because you'd appreciate that the national average, as I've said earlier, is around one ton, 1.5 tons per hectare, but we have the potential to have, uh, we have varieties that have the potential to do about 4.5 tons. So soil testing is very important to determine the soil nutrient content, which informs the rate and type of, of fertilizer to apply. It also allows us to have a cost-effective approach as far as our resources management is concerned. Um, it is very important to uh, in, in such a manner that it informs the long long term soil health issues. It also it's also important in determining the soil pH. The soil pH it is the acidity or alkalinity of the soil or the concentration of hydrogen ion to be sustained. Um, is very important because it affects nutrient availability. Um, soil testing therefore provides an accurate measure, accurate measure of pH and enables adjustment if it is necessary. Adjustment can be done in terms of uh, lime, which can be calcitic lime or dolomitic lime, um, or can, adjustment can be made in terms of sulfur, organic matter, or nitrogen fertilizer if the pH is high. So basically, with ZFC, we have a number of tests that we do. We have the pH test, which goes about $6 takes a turnaround time of five days. 
There's a basic test which takes care of your pH, your NPK, and your nitrogen. We also have a premium test which takes additional uh, copper, manganese, and, and iron. So soil testing is very important uh, because if you find a pH range for tobacco, as I already mentioned, is 5.5 to 6.5. Under acidic condition, you see you see toxicity in terms of aluminium, hydrogen ions, and manganese ions. You also see deficiency in terms of your phosphorus, your calcium, your molybdenum, and your magnesium. So they won't be available, those nutrients. You also see uh, under alkaline conditions, which is pH greater than 7.5, you are likely to see deficiency of phosphorus, um, iron, and zinc. You also have excess of um, the carbonic, carbonic acid. You also have nutrient imbalances in terms of your calcium, magnesium, and potassium. So with SRFC or any other fertilizer company, we recommend what you call fertilizer-based management practices, which encourage farmers. Uh, we encourage farmers to use fertilizer in an effective and efficient manner through what you call customized crop recommendations and fertilizer-based management practices. So correct fertilizer application it helps in boost, to boost the resilience of crops and plays an important role in climate change adaptation. As you know, that a well-fed crop is always, it will always defend itself against most disease. So in order to manage your crop, um, your crop nutrition, you need to follow what we call the four areas of principles of nutrient stewardship, which is the right source, which matches the Fertilizer type and the crop needs the right rate, matches the fertilizer amount and crop needs the right time, makes use of the nutrients available when the crop needs in the right place, which calls for the placing of nutrients where crops can actually take them. I, allow me to take you through um, one of the studies that were done in Utopia. Um, by mere adoption of the four hours, maize productivity was increased from two tons. Uh, from a range of two tons to four tons to seven tons. And it also increased the cross margin. So it would be interesting for Zimbabwe to actually come up with such data for those that are interested in research so that we appreciate what's the level of adoption of these four hours since they have a potential to increase productivity and uh, cross margin um, of various crops. So I'll take you through the parcel dressing for a three ton crop. We have a number of options that we have is RFC. We have RFC tobacco fat, which is popular known as compound C, which you can apply 700 kgs per hectare, which is um, what I would normally call the legendary compound C. We also have tobacco fat, which is IB, which is the one of its kind, because it's a granulated eye analysis compound, which is the only one you can find in this country. You can apply that one at 500 kgs per hectare. We also have IC at 450 kgs per hectare. We also have um, ZFC seed bed, which you can apply at 500 kgs per hectare. Maybe the point that I need to emphasize when you are using seed bed fat is that your potash definitely will be low. You might also need to come up with 100 kgs per hectare of um, SOP. What um, one of the chemical, one of the fertilizer, or one of the fertilizer or soil amendments that are very important in tobacco production. Is your gypsum. Your gypsum helps you to improve soil structure and fertility. It also helps to break down heavy clays and enhance drainage and aeration processes. It also supplies your calcium and sulfur, which are very important um, secondary nutrients in tobacco production. It's also critical in disease management. Um, it is a suppressing effect on, on black shank, um, so you also need to use it. But also, gypsum is found to increase yield and quality. Uh, which has been associated with gypsum has been associated with leaf size increases, leaf thickness, and improved curing uh, properties. In addition, you would appreciate that uh, crops that are treated with gypsum, actually, um, they don't do much trash when you're handling them. They are very soft, which give them also, um, they have what we call a better cutting quality, which is the ability of a leaf to be cut into strips without breaking, which is a very critical component which buyers look for when they are buying tobacco. The rate of it, the rate of gypsum is 300 kgs per hectare, which can be achieved by cup number 16. In terms of top dressing, um, AN is recommended at 100 to 150 kgs per hectare at around three to five weeks. Then for the second application, which comes at bad topping or a week before top, bad topping, we recommend potassium nitrate 
or carbon calcium nitrate. The choice definitely, definitely depends on soil characteristics for those that are in potash fixing soils or they are with soils that are prone to what we call potassium firing, we recommend potassium nitrate. For those that are worried about the cutting quality of the leaf, we recommend calcium nitrate. Um, I'm, more, I'm going to mention a little bit about leaching adjustment. Um, wherever there is excess rain, it's always mainly to mainly cause leaching, uh, but you can't have, a, there's no rate or the amount of nitrogen that you need to amount to, 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 to apply in order to adjust for leaching. Because leaching depends on various factors, but um, 75 kgs per hectare of AN delivered with cup number five should suffice, or alternatively, 150 kgs of calcium nitrate at cup number eight should also be enough. Uh, for December plantings, you see there will be a lot of uh, precipitation during that period. 300 kgs of AN should be applied four, four times um, at 75 kgs per hectare each application. This can be done at weekly intervals, or alternatively, you can use calcium nitrate. But uh, as you are aware, that AN is more persistent in the soil than calcium nitrate. Therefore, a calcium nitrate is more prone to leaching. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about potassium deficiency. It is um, a, a condition that normally, um, as a result of um, excessive moisture, so which then slow down deficiency of calcium into the roots, uh, which then result in deficiency. So by me improving drainage systems, a deficiency can be self-correcting without any addition of potassium. Additionally, if there is need, we can apply SOP at uh, 100 kgs per hectare, which can be delivered at cut number five. Foliars are very important in tobacco production, but what I need to emphasize is that these are used as supplements. Um, these are used as supplements. Um, you can apply what we call foliar 15, at 0 0.8 liters per hectare. At day 30, you can apply two to three times. You can also apply your quick start, quick grow, and best bloom um, at two kgs per hectare. Maybe some will be surprised that a uh, while can be best bloom be recommended when we are, it's more the product that is popular in, 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 in fruits and vegetables. Actually, you see it as high levels of potash uh, which is around 35%, which is very critical to mitigate against potassium firing or potassium divisions, which is a problem that you normally see just after topping. In terms of weed management, uh, we need to come in with, with the weed control, especially during the first four to five weeks. And weeds can actually lead to 50 to 70% yield reduction. But if you find yourself in, 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 in attacked by weeds, such as your your, your pain that day, you are likely to lose the whole crop. So the choice, the website selecting factors depends on quite a number of issues, which is the weed spectrum, the stage of control, and the rotation plan, what you need to put in after you have removed your tobacco. You also have to, uh, weed management is very critical. You can use different pesticide applicators, such as your boom spray and your NEPSCAP. Your NEPSCAP still is a very important tool, especially when you are applying post-directed uh, herbicides, such as your halosulfone, which might be difficult to apply using the whole, the boom. But you need to calibrate, and you need to make sure that we use the right nozzle when you're using NEPSED. You would appreciate that we have your holocone, your flat pen, your flat jet type of nozzles, which differ in terms of where you need to use the whole, you know, which one on, whether you're using it for insecticides, herbicides, or any other chemical solutions. So in terms of pre-plant cleanup, you need your glyphosate, which can be so, uh, um, granular, in granular formulation or in liquid formulation. You can also use your diquat. But what is critical is you need to avoid drift in non-target crops. In terms of pre-emergence, I don't want to talk a little bit about this one because I've seen a lot of our products that I'm not sure whether they've been withdrawn or not. You would appreciate that Frontier Optima, which is dynamite. It is said to be withdrawn, but this one is dynamite with P. So I'm not sure the current tobacco research board um, uh, withdrawal, that it, it, whether it includes the isomers of, uh, of this one. Both the frontier optima contains an isomer of dynamite, which is dynamite P. And butler gold in, uh, also is metallic, which is an isomer of metallic. 
that the Jua Maglan Clomazon from the Outna Bacla Gold and South Central Zone. Those are some of the pre imaging the herbicide options that the farmer have. And all in terms of post imaging the herbicide, you have your aloe saffron and your fluoroxifop. But your aloe saffron you need, is mainly critical for your nut sage. You need to add what we call ZFC, Sanawet, which is a wetting agent. We, um, and also, you need to apply it as a post directed. Therefore, you need to use shields, which you can purchase from agrochemical shops when it can actually improvise by using a five liter empty container. In terms of insect pest attack, uh, what is critical in terms of insect pest management is pest scouting, which allows you to track pest populations, allows you to apply the pesticide at the correct time and indicates efficacy of treatment. Um, in terms of the common pests, we have the aphids, which is aphids in tobacco, which is the green peach aphid, mice specica, which is um, a trans, uh, which transmit PVI and also causes honey to substrate for the growth of black soup mold, which reduces the plant's ability to photosynthesize. To photosynthesize. In terms of selection of solutions that we have at ZFC, we have thunder uh, that you can apply at 200 mils, at 100 liters of water. But the beauty with thunder, you can actually apply it, at, it during the planting. It also controls your white crabs, your cutworm, your fire, your fireworm. You also have the, the, the methoid, which you can apply from two to three weeks after planting at cup number 16. We have our flagship product, Spike Extra, which you can apply at a range of 300 to 500 mils. Um, of course, the product that are registered for tobacco include your aphids, your leaf miner, and white badworm, but it is uh, found, it also controls your lipidotinum pest and your red spade mite. You also have Aptara, which you can apply to 560 kgs per 560 grams per hectare. And we also have cutworms, it's a very it's a pest of economic importance in tobacco. You can use your lambda, um, which can come in as a, as a planning wall application or can be used. You can also use what you call the spray application. You can also apply thunder, but uh, as I, I've already explained the rates and how you apply your thunder. You can also, one of the pests that is also of economic importance in tobacco is your bad worms. Uh, you can apply your spike extra, your thunder, your belt. Uh, these are very critical pests that you need to control because they can actually come in and destroy your crops uh, causing those gunshot holes in your tobacco crop. So you need to apply, you need to control them because you understand, you would appreciate that tobacco, you actually harvest the leaves. So you want, you don't want your leaves to be perforated um, before they are presented for market. In terms of um, diseases, we have um, various types of diseases. Uh, we have your outer area, your frog guy, your white, your white, your wild fire. Um, your outer area basically is, uh, comes in as a small circular shape, in, in which are irregular, and it also affects your seed bed and your lens. So at the bottom of my picture there, you that's that's your 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 your, your outer area, and at the at the mid is your outer area. Then this is your frog eye. Your frog eye is, is, is normally not a disease of, of economic importance. Why am I saying so? Because it's also a sign of maturity, which is one of the desirable aspects in terms of the tobacco leaf. But what you need to make sure is that it should not be excessive such that it takes the greater portion of the leaf. So you need to manage it under certain circumstances. So in terms of solutions, you use your, your azoxtroblin, plus diphenyl at a rate of 500 mils at um, um, 8, 10, 12, 14 weeks after planting. This is applied as a preventative spray. Was the azoxtroblin actually can sit on top of your leaf, therefore avoiding spores from being formed. In terms of your angular leaf spot, this is, I, I prefer to call it, yes, it is a disease, but it is also a sign of fertilizer mismanagement. It is caused by excess amounts of nitrogen in the lower potassium that makes the, the plants more susceptible to angular leaf. It's also caused by excessive amounts of lime. You would appreciate that there are farmers that actually apply the lime in the planting was without the soil testing. So this excessive application of lime can cause disease severity. It can also be caused as a result of calcium deficiency. So calcium amendments will alleviate the symptoms of this disease. In terms of uh, ZFC solutions, we have bio, which you can apply twice. We also, it, it must be applied as a preventative 
in terms of outbreak, yes, iron can actually mitigate, arrest spread of the disease, but will not necessarily cure already affected leaves. So in terms of uh, this is endless leaf spot in different stages of progression, it will then lead to this um, at the bottom, what you call it will enlarge and collapse, therefore affecting your leaf. In terms of diseases, we have a tobacco mosaic virus. You can see there the gentleman is actually touching um, uh, the tobacco leaf, which is one of the methods that actually can spread disease. So, so in terms of they should avoid touching or mechanical damage of uh, the tobacco. So in terms of symptoms, it causes those more desired, which are dark green areas and chloritic like green areas. Um, but the affected crop might not necessarily die, but it can cause 30 to 50 percent loss. In terms of management, you need to use certified seed, sanitation, and use of resistant varieties. Uh, if you have uh, observed, uh, I mean, if one of your fruits got affected with um, TMV, you need to stop growing of tobacco in that field for a period, let's say, of two years. Then in terms of another viral diseases, we have PVY, uh, which, is, um, which, which is normally have symptoms such as necrotic and mosaic strains. Uh, it, is a, it is mainly uh, transmitted by aphids. So aphids management is one of the critical areas. It's one of the critical solutions that you can need to, you need to come in, but you also have to adhere to strict hygiene you also need to rock out the plants that are affected. You can actually put them in a plastic bag and um, avoid contact with an uninfected crops and you can throw it outside um, the field. Make sure that it doesn't come in contact with those plants that are not affected. And you can also apply iron and also you need to optimize your nutrition as well. It is one of the solutions in terms of PVI. I'm going to talk a little bit about hail damage. It's one of the problems that you normally face, especially in areas that stretch from uh, slow growing areas, areas that stretch from uh, Darwindio into Marondira, into Macheke, and part of Mrewa there. Uh, the solutions include um, use of bion. Um, if the crop um, is still under growth, you can use your calcium nitrate. In case your leaves have been brought down, you can harvest, you can pick them up and apply ethaphon. Uh, those are some of the methods that you can use uh, to mitigate against the hailstorm. Uh, but what I need to emphasize there is that that damage in terms of hail can also lead to angular leaf spot. In terms of nematodes, there are various nematicide options that are available in the market, market which is your velum, your methamsodium, sodium, your sovico, and oxamil. I'm going, only going to narrow in in what you call supplementary application of oxamil which is recommended for you to have a prolonged nematode control uh, by, by application of uh, oxamil, you actually have that prolonged period of nematode control. So in terms of, as I'm saying, it's a supplementary application, which means you would have applied uh, another nematicide in planting. So you can actually attain that by using a cup application with a rate of 600, 30 mils in 100 liters of water, then you apply cup number 30 um, uh, over the crop at three to five weeks. You can also use the spray application. Uh, the rate basically comes to about 3.6 to 3.7 liters per hectare. Suckers are very important, as you know, very, as you have appreciated from Dr. Mugu's presentation, he mentioned that uh, um, some of the new sucker sites that we, such as been metaling have been withdrawn. So what are the options that are available? Your end decano is still available, which you can use at bud topping um, at uh, cup number 30, uh, which can be applied over the top of, uh, over, uh, over the three quarters, the best three quarters of the plant uh, until the, the nematode, until the sacaside goes to the base of the plant. But there are other options that have been introduced, which are uh, recommended, such as your flumetrolin, which can be applied uh, is a, a final sacasite or can be applied in combination with our normal decano. So with all these gentlemen, I hope you have a good time at the floors. I wish you well. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank um, Agribusiness for giving us this opportunity. 
Uh, my name is Ngoni Yamutsuka. I'm from uh, Bluefin Technology. I'll just give a brief, brief background about uh, Bluefin Technology. So Bluefin Technology is an insure tech uh, company uh, under the subsidiary of Shambiwanza. We specialize in innovative digital transformation solutions uh, and uh, risk management consultant services uh, to business and individuals. Uh, and one of our um, flagship or our solutions uh, service we give precisely to farmers is our uh, crop uh, crop and weather monitoring uh, solution where we focus on deliver uh, comprehensive crop uh, comprehensive crop and uh, and weather monitoring solutions uh, that we hope to assist our our stakeholders uh, mainly our farmers uh, in uh, improving our uh, efficiency so um, uh, I think I will just uh, take you through the system. I will, I will just uh, try to, to cover on the um, high level, high level uh, solutions and show you how the system works. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, as I will be presenting, maybe you can just uh, throw them as I go. So on my screen here is our system, uh, which is our, our solution, which is our, our smart Kurima. So I will just uh, show you how we add a field here. However, I'm not going to add a field, I'll just use uh, these fields uh, which are highlighted as test fields to show you how it works. So when you want to add a new field, uh, you find uh, uh, GPS locations for the certain fields, then you add them here. You come here when, where it says add field, then you add uh, GPS locations, then you add your field. Uh, whether in any part of the world, uh, you can uh, add your field and be able to monitor it. So I'm just going to use this one, which is called uh, test uh, apple here for uh, the apple field here. So I will show you how it how it works. So here we are looking at the satellite images uh, for the field and uh, the weather. Uh, with the patterns analytics uh, from the rainforest, the wind, uh, wind speed, and um, the indices we uh, we used we used to measure our our field there. So this test field, as you can see here, as it is loading, you can see uh, it's a uh, 0.37 hectares, and these are the locations where it is uh, the exact location, the GPS, and uh, these are our sowing dates uh, where we added uh, on our field. If you want to add uh, any information, you can just add here where you say uh, harvesting date, you can add uh, the irrigation type, you can add the tillage type, you can add uh, any information and uh, some notes here, you can add some notes which you think would, which uh, might be helpful. Uh, for example, the type of fertilizers uh, put, uh, the day you put some fertilizers, uh, how you irrigate your, your field and so forth. So you can add all the notes here on the field here. As you can see, so this is our current weather on that uh, certain field on the, uh, our 20, uh, as of 3 November. This is our current weather here. You can see our vegetation map. Okay, I will touch again on those uh, scouting tasks. Uh, then you see as, uh, as we go, I will be explaining as we go. <clears throat> okay. So these are our, here where we have, uh, I will touch on these ones. These are our indices here, where you used to measure our, um, our vegetation and our field uh, is uh, performing. We have here, this is the natural color. Uh, this one will just give the natural color of the field as it is as of now. If you want there, you can just see the natural color of the field. Then we have here, where we have our NDVI, which is our normalized different vegetation index. That's where we are now. So this one is a, it is, it is calculated according to the way a plant reflects and absorbs our solar radiation, which is our, our sun uh, and our solar radiation in different wavelengths. <coughs> and so this uh, NDVI, uh, it, also, uh, it also allows for the identification of problem areas uh, of the field at different, at different stages of plant growth. Uh, is a uh, different stages of plant growth. And on this one, we are always um, reminded to pay attention to areas where the NTV val uh, values differ considerably. I think I will also show 
on this one they are okay as we i will explain on this as you can see the colors here when you have this green uh, the darker green one and uh, when this one shows uh, the better uh, the uh, vegetation density as we go so as of now i think we are around here where we have open open soil as we go uh, through those uh, color indices I think since today we are in November, I think we can all agree that uh, most of our fields there are open soils. There is no any any anything on our fields here. So these few days of now, there's nothing else. There is still is still open soil. But if we go maybe behind there, I will show you. But let me just uh, fin finish explaining on on this on these indices. So I think I'm done with NDV. And then this one the NDRE, which is our normalized uh, difference rate edge. This one is, uh, it indicates our photosynthetic activity of the vegetation uh, cover. And uh, it, it also uses our nitrogen concentrates in, uh, in plant leaves and uh, in the middle and uh, at the end of the seasons. It also allows us to, to detect uh, the oppressed and aging vegetation. It's, it's used to identify plant diseases. So this one is uh, most useful at the advanced stage of the crop, this NDRE. Then we have this one, uh, MSA VIM survey, which is our modified soil adjusted uh, vegetation index. This one, uh, <clears throat> this one allows us to determine the presence of vegetation in the early stages of emergence when there is uh, a lot of bare soil. So this one is mostly uh, used when there's uh, in our early stages of emergence, I think early stages of germination. So th this one uh, minimizes the effects of base soil uh, on the display of vegetation maps. And you can build uh, maps for different fertilizer applications in the early stages of the crop. Then we have this one, the RECI, which is our red edge growth of your index. This one is also, a photo is also an index of uh, photosynthetic uh, activities such as the NDRE. This one is, is since it's a level of uh, chlorophyll is directly related to the level of nitrogen in the crop, the index allows us to identify the areas of the field to have uh, that have yellowed or faded leaves, which may require additional fertilizer or additional attention. Then we have our moisture index here, where we use the NDMI, which has a normalized difference moisture index. This one describes the, uh, the crop's water stress levels. So in this one, we are, we are dealing about our, it, it calculates our, um, our water levels and our soil moisture. So the interpre inter interpretation of the absolute value of the NDMI makes it possible to imme immediately recognize the areas in which the farm or field is uh, experiencing water stress. This was, uh, it's, it's easy to interpret. It's, it's, its values they vary from minus one to one, and each value corresponds to a different uh, a different agronomic situation, independently of the crop which we have uh, maybe selected. So as I was saying here, on the NDVI, let's use this one. As we said, uh, it, as we said, it, it reflects. As we said, this one uh, it allows for identification of problem areas on the field at different stages of plant growth for time, time, uh, timely response. Since we said the, we are in uh, November, we are, I think we can all agree that uh, most of the fields are still open soil, but uh, let's just maybe go back to around uh, March or February, March or February there, so that you can see around that area. Around that time, I, there will be, I think there will be rainfall and uh, the food will be dense, I think, that there will be dense vegetation around us uh, that time. So let me just go around that time and see for that selected uh, field. Let me just go to June, then we see as we, as we will see the difference as we go to that area. As you can see here, <clears throat> the colors are now changing. Okay, let me go around to Feb, around to March then. Okay, yeah, let me select it here, 7 March. 
So this will, this will be our field. And I think, uh, you, as you can see, according to these colors, you can see that this area here is dense, dense vegetation, and you can see this, uh, some of these areas, there's some stress maybe. There was some harvesting around that time as we are, as we are approaching end of the season. So these are our measurements here. These are our measurements. And on, uh, on this uh, system, our smart cooling, we can be able again to, to see our weather patterns and to make a forecast. As you can see here, we have an analytics for our weather pattern for this uh, certain field. Let me go there and show you. Okay, so this is our data where we have our uh, accumulated precipitation for that certain field. Then we have our daily precipitation for that certain field, as you can see. So these are our precipitations uh, for that field. And as you can see here, I think we received some rainfalls uh, around this uh, two weeks or a week ago, as you can see these ones. So these are our precipitations levels for that field. You can uh, see the analytics there our temperatures there for that certain field, <clears throat> right? Then we can also uh, focus, uh, do a weather forecast on, uh, for that certain field at a particular time. We can do two weeks forecast uh, so you can uh, know when to apply maybe fertilizers or sort of uh, pest, pesticides, ETC. So you can uh, focus for the next two weeks, next four, 14 days for that certain particular, uh, for that particular field. So for this particular field, as you can see, these are weather forecast. You can see the relative humidity, the clouds, wind speed, uh, minimum and maximum temperatures, and the precipitation. As for this particular field, you can see that you can anticipate that they, they may be 20.2 uh, millimeters of precipitation on the 13th of November. So you can plan accordingly. Then there is, again, we, where we call scout, uh, scout tasks here, so on this one, you can see maybe there's a certain, okay, maybe there's a certain area on the field where you feel, where, where you feel there might be a problem. So you can send, uh, you can, uh, like, I think, let me go to this one, as we had uh, assigned a task on this one, a scout on this one. Let it load in this area, there were some uh, issues there. There was some, I think the area, there was some problem. So you can pinpoint on a certain area on the field. Then you can send uh, maybe an agronomist or someone who's on the field to go there and see what's on the area. And you can upload pictures and uh, some notes on the area, on the area to be scouted there. So on the scout, we mainly use, as you can see here, this, if you send, then you say scout this area, fill out the report and uh, add some, some pictures on, on the certain field. So you can send a scout where you can uh, see maybe the, maybe someone, let's say tobacco, someone can uh, maybe there was a hailstorm, you can see this certain area, there was a problem. They say this a scout can go there and take pictures and upload and uh, make sure you can confirm that uh, there's a problem there on the certain area. So that's how uh, scouts work. Then you can see maybe an overview of your field. These are, you can see the season analytics or the season analytics for the crop for the whole season. For the whole season of that year, you can see some season analytics for that uh, crop. Then as, as in terms, oh, let me go, go back again. As in terms of analytics of that certain field, you can be, go back as, uh, as big as uh, 75 years to see how that uh, field in terms of weather and uh, how that the, the weather was it for that uh, certain certain period. So that even a person can say, let's say for tobacco, a person can say that there was a hailstorm, or for me, you can say that there was a hailstorm. You can see that no, there was the, uh, as, as per these days or this month, no, the wind speed was okay. Uh, the amount of rain, rainfall was this, so there wasn't, uh, rainfall for that, and you can even plan uh, for the future, according to those ones. Okay, as I'm going, uh, maybe someone might have a question, or maybe you can ask as I'm, uh, whilst, whilst I'm done. My name is Freedom Tivagare, and I'm the Market Information Office of TIMB. 
And I'm going to cover areas around the overview of uh, the Topago industry and marketing role in the industry. We are also going to look at uh, uh, the structure of the industry, the production trends, and uh, the current state of, um, of, of, of uh, the industry uh, in terms of uh, uh, how health the industry is performing and, uh, and, and the direction that we are, we are moving towards. Uh, from the first presenters I heard of from them talking about um, the importance of the tobacco transformation uh, the tobacco valley uh, transformation plan which is uh, at the center of everything that we ought to do until 2025 where we want to build a five trillion dollar industry tobacco industry to increase our production to around uh, 300 million kgs and uh, we are going to be also centered on that particular area where we are discussing the, the trends how the numbers are showing and uh, the direction we are taking so as a way of overview, we are a tobacco industry marketing board, a regulatory and advisory board, who is born out of an um, act of parliament, uh, eight, uh, chapter 1820, whereby we have got functions that include uh, regulation and controlling of the tobacco growing and marketing in Zimbabwe, also the regulation of uh, exporting of tobacco and other activities that we are going to see in our, in, in our presentation. If we may move to the next slide. So the TIMB's main focal areas are around sustainability, whereby we want to promote sustainable tobacco production. I'm going to be touching on some of the important key areas that involve sustainability matters and also a regulation whereby we want to make sure that we have 100% compliance with the tobacco legislations. This is to make sure that we have got a healthy industry that is well coordinated and uh, that can uh, stand the test of time. There is also an issue of vi viability that is at the center also of our tobacco value chain transformation plan, where we would want to make sure that the tobacco growers over and above production of tobacco, they are also economically viable in terms of um, their activities. Well, farming is, is, is also in equally important business that one should realize the returns uh, from. So in terms of the functions, we are to regulate the marketing of tobacco in Zimbabwe. We promote and maintain the sale of tobacco. We also gather statistics and uh, studies relating to manufacture, to uh, consumption of tobacco. We also advise the Minister of Agriculture on all matters that uh, relate to all things to do with tobacco and also the act. So those are the main functions that um, TIMB does. Then in terms of the services, we administer and control the tobacco. Um, we have got also a responsibility to collect and distribute information on tobacco production, consumption and export. Then also we conduct crop assessments to determine the crop yield potential and quality composition of the tobacco in advance of the selling season. We also grant export permits. Well, this is very important. We, so far as we speak today, of, as of today, we have all granted permits amounting to the volume around 200 million kg so far, which is worth, which is worth over $1 billion. Uh, we also license tobacco buyers and auction floors. We also monitor uh, a time as a shipment of tobacco exports, a control of tobacco pests in exported tobacco and from and also pesticide residues. And we also register all types of tobacco growers. So once you visit TMB, you can get your grower number as long as you've got all the paperwork in place that is required. In terms of the structure in the industry, we have got um, the Minister of Lands, Agriculture, Water and uh, rural development uh, we've got also the growing sector that is consists of our growers the marketing sector uh, the merchants and manufacturers and other players that are involved in the value chain of uh, the tobacco industry uh, the growing sector is also a key sector we've got um, the small scale growers the commercial and the communal growers we've got also research and development 
research and development that is um, uh, training institutions that are into research and also agritechs that is there and also tobacco associations that uh, some individual tobacco growers are also affiliated to uh, for engagement purposes from time to time. So we've got TIMB as the regulator of um, the marketing uh, uh, systems where we've got uh, the auction floors and the contractors. And we all, I would like to believe everyone knows the roles of these individuals, the contractors, those are the ones that brings inputs to the growers and uh, support production of tobacco. And then they, sub, uh, they deliver the tobacco to the growers. Then the auction floors is for those that have got free funds and they produce for their, on, their, on their own. And um, they bring the tobacco to the auction floors where tobacco is purchased by different uh, players, the buyers. E, moving on to the production trends that we have witnessed over the years, it started from 2000 there. You can see the, the bars are showing the volumes produced over the years in, in million kgs, and also we've got the average price that was uh, obtaining. So you can see that gradually there has been an increase in terms of production from around 2005 thereabout up to 2023, where we reached the uh, highest ever of 296 uh, million kgs. Uh, which was which uh, was higher than the 2019 where we produced around 260 million kgs three dollars three cents per kg so there's been an increase in terms of production that has been going on which gives us confidence that in terms of achieving the objectives of the tobacco transformation plan of achieving around 300 million kgs by 2025 we have been short of four million kgs uh, this year to get to that uh, target Working together, the farmers and the, the various players, I would like to believe that that can be attained. In terms of the current state of the industry, so far we have got we have seen that over the years we've got an average production of over 200 million kgs of leaf. We have got also exports of around over 180 million kgs, generating close to one billion dollars of revenue that is generated from exports. And the Far East, which is China, mostly taking 30% of our tobacco uh, in the, uh, around the world annually. Then in terms of exports, you can see the breakdown there where we have got Far East 41%, Africa 22%, EU at uh, 16 and 11 for Middle East. So we have got a very strong partner in the name of Far East where the majority of our tobacco is growing. But when you look at the value that is generated from the Far East in market, you can actually see these are the top end qualities which are taken into China for the best brands. So that's where you fetch prices around $5, $4 thereabout of the tobacco leaf that is then processed and sent to Far East, which is a very important market for our tobacco. Then in terms of the breakdown of the tobacco that we produce, 5% of it is exported in the form of um, a processed uh, a, a catrag that is somehow uh, been uh, treated to some kind of processing and manufacturing. And we've got 75% that is uh, sent as lamina, 20% is uh, byproducts, that is the same in the, the stems and the fines. Then 2% of our tobacco is consumed uh, locally in the form of cigarettes, uh, which we would like to believe that uh, we've got a target, of, a target of increasing the value added tobacco to around 30% of production. Now coming to the economics of tobacco production, we have just illustrated the uh, small summarized uh, 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 costs, uh, input costs and uh, the, the yield of around 2.5. If someone is to produce 2.5, uh, tons per hectare at uh, a, a cost of um, 2.7, assuming that the price would be $3 as of uh, last in season, the, an individual can generate around 7,500 uh, and an income of 4.5. Uh, uh, however, this can change depending on the market uh, in terms of um, the cost of production which is one area which I'm going to touch on in terms of the cost of production. Remember 2020, 
2020 and 2021. That's where we realized a high cost of for production in the industry because of the limited supplies of inputs uh, as a result of COVID-19 that disrupted uh, the distribution and also uh, issues around uh, the global geopolitical environment, uh, issues around uh, uh, the war in Ukraine and the like that pushed the cost of fertilizers high. So in terms of the cost of production in 2021, you could see that a small scaler was uh, at around $2.60 per kg a small scale farm at $3.07 per kg and a commercial farm at around $3.19. So if you look at those average prices, someone for them to break even, they should be have an average of above those uh, numbers for them to break even. So that is uh, what we aim to achieve, whereby there's a, a, a to, to, to achieve a, a viability among the farmers so that they've got a return to take home after their uh, hard work. Uh, moving on to the next uh, final stage, the uh, final slide, where well, the challenges that are, is, are ensuing the industry, that is uh, sustainability issues. Deforestation, I had someone ask the question around what TMB is doing about planting trees. This is one of the challenges that we are facing. We've got also child labor issues, uh, climate change and the like. So TMB has put in place uh, measures to make sure that uh, they, it deals directly with those matters. Remember, the, the, the global market we are competing with, we've got Brazil that has got a robust sustainability uh, approach to production of tobacco. Uh, this is uh, our, uh, our biggest competitor. So in the market, we should be ticking boxes in terms of making sure that we are um, also uh, at the top in terms of sustainability issues because that's what the market is di dictating now to say, is your tobacco produced sustainably? Is there child labor? Is there fair labor practices that is taking place? If you produce in a way that is um, environmentally friendly, that, those are the matters that um, uh, are very important and we are working towards that. Then the viability issues, the arising cost of um, the production in terms of the US and the, and the ZWL, and also the funding mechanisms around it. Uh, we are happy that the government is allowed through Arabiz now that tobacco can now be funded locally using local funds, which will also make sure that we, have, we are going to reduce the burden of um, remitting back the loans that would have come from offshore, uh, bring the net benefit to the country. With that, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.